These are pistachio, but this is a hundred percent pistachio from the Iranian pistachio. It's green, like really green. I love pistachio. Oh my god. This is our signature pastry, our uh, Sicilian cannoli. Sicilian. We also make a pistachio cannoli if you want a chocolate cannoli. But 95% of the cannolis that are ordered are here. Yeah. Are the Sicilian. This is like what? Handmade, yeah. hand rolled, fried. Here, everything is done on premises. Each and every cannoli yeah. is a little bit different. They do not, they're not all the same. They don't all look the same. One might be a little bit shorter, longer. Yeah. You know? Because they're all made by hand. There's not one machine touch, just the mixer that mixes the dough, but the rest is all done by hand. Why? Yeah. From wow. cutting to stretching to rolling. And actually, it's kind of done on purpose for that reason, to show that it's handmade, right? Wow. Oh, the Sicilian cannoli, this is which something is, you inherit from your dad. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about about yeah. my father. Well, yeah. he came here in nineteen here in the sixties as a child. He, I think he was about six or seven years old. Amazing. And when he turned eighteen, he opened up his first bakery. It was him, his brother, and his brother-in-law, on Jane and Lawrence. And I, it cost him three thousand dollars. Can you believe it? Three thousand wow. dollars to open up a business. Wow. But well, that that's when that's when a dollar was worth a dollar. I suppose that was, not like now. I'm imagining then you probably look at about hundreds of dollars now. Oh, for sure, for sure. And uh, they opened up their first bakery. It was a family run, family operated. You know, they couldn't really have employees because when you start up a business, it's, that's kind of tough. That's right. They lived upstairs, and they made it work. They did it. Uh, yeah, I think 1970 or 69 or 70 is when they opened it. They became incorporated or lived at, in 1974 by Sam. And the rest is history. Amazing. We came here in 1988. It used to be called Santino Italian Bakery. Hmm. The, the gentleman was ready to retire. He had three daughters, but they were all married and children. And, That's right. and they didn't want to inherit the store. Yeah, yeah. So he's, my father wanted to acquire it. He was very picky and choosy who he sold it to. He wanted to sell it to somebody who would take, take it further. For, yeah, further oh. with. So he saw my dad, he had three little kids, boys. That's not so uh, he sold it to my father. Amazing. And that, I believe, was 86 or 88. And, you know, and it's still going strong. And now. it's still going, yeah. Wow. Uh, God rest my father, so he passed away in 2020. Oh, nice. And he worked right up until his last day. You know, he, you know, he just, yeah. that's, that's the type of peep men. That's the generation peep, yeah, They just worked and. Right. And past that, you know, DNA. Oh yeah, we're all that. cut from the same cloth, as I like to say. And um, yeah, he was my hero. So, beautiful. my father, yeah. Beautiful. Well, I can't wait to actually try this. Um, um, is it cannoli. Cannoli, cannoli, that's right. Yeah, cannoli. people say cannaroni, but cannaroni is pasta. It's yeah. actually easier to say cannoli than cannaroni, but it's cannoli. Wow, okay. Sicilian cannoli with ricotta, so puro ricotta cheese. I'm gonna give them a plug. One nice of the one. best ricottas I've ever had, hands down. It's got almost 14% milk fat as opposed to like your other ricotta that's only 10%, wow, exactly. and the rest is water. Yeah, that's. The real deal. This is the real deal. The real deal. Well, we're gonna do it. This. 
This is our Friday special at the Scallopinian Rice. Yes. Yeah. All right, Alex, take care. Ciao, want to pass it out. Take it easy. Uh, I don't have sugar in my coffee. No, no, ci vorrebbe senza, dico. Ah. C'è chi ce la fa, chi no. Yeah. Chocolate? Yes. Che? A parte, dammi una bustina vuota di quelle piccoline. C'è una signora dentro alla palazzina mia che gli ha fatto assaggiare questi biscotti che gli piacciono. Yeah, yeah. Vuole lasciare tutto giusto due o tre per assaggiarli. Ok, non può. Fuma caraio. Grazie, no problem, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 and that's all, yeah. It's more like your antipasto type thing. You got some vegetables, yeah. and you have the little crostatini, which is just rice, white rice, and ricotta, and it's fried. It's a little, that's one of my favorites as well. Then you have some vegetables, seasonal vegetables, right now. Yeah. And um, here, like I said, we have our Friday dish, which is chicken scallopini and rice. But you have your, we have a regular staple like any hot table. You got your veal, your pasta, your pizza. But every day, like tomorrow, we have a very nice smoked brisket on a Saturday. Oh yeah, so yeah. that comes. That's just Saturdays. Like I said, every day we have your, we have our set menu. Yeah. But like Wednesday we'll have uh, stew. Mm -hmm. Tuesday we'll have spicy veal. Right. You know. That's amazing. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. What happened? That's okay. So that means every Saturday. And Saturday we have smoked brisket. What That's time does it normally start? At ten thirty, the smoked briskets is okay. usually done. Goes on throughout the day. Sorry? This goes on to the day. No, we have we have basically like a a giant smoked brisket, and when it's done, it's done. Uh -huh. Yeah, we don't go through the day. It's just like it's like it's a, it's a specialty item, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's Absolutely. also because it's meat. You don't want once it's gone, it's gone. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice one. And the cannoli and the enos. These are the Sicilian pastries. This is what uh, this is what we're known for, and actually the enos as well. No, the vet, they're all steamed fresh, oh. made every day. You know, everything is done fresh. Oh. That's the thing, and you know, and especially now with you know rising prices, you know, we're we're not gonna, you know, make uh, oh. an inferior product because of because of the price. You know, oh. we're still gonna keep the quality high. Yeah, especially peppers and the vegetables. I think vegetables and meat is probably right now. And that's just your rice and your ricotta, and it's a little crostatinis, I think. Mm. Patatinis or... Mm. Yeah. Patatini. Patati. I call them patatini. They look like little potatoes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Very simple recipe, just rice and really good ricotta, and it's made fresh. Mm -hmm. That's also uh, a specialty item. We only do it twice a week. Mm -hmm. wow, Try the chicken. The chicken is very good. We have a very great, she's a great, she's been with us for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sunny, yeah, she's the chef. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a most, a lot of our, our cooks, our baker's been with us for 30 years, so there's longevity in all of our employees, you know. But that's very good. Man, this is, this is something else. It's good, yeah. It's a very good, What's very it? good dish. How do you? I don't know. I don't bake. Actually, I bake. I can't cook. <laughs> yeah, but what, what, My wife's a chef. That's why it's kind of good. She, she, she cooks, I bake. But what I want to ask you, how do you send this message to, you know, to the community? Because this well, like is we're we're more traditional. Like cool. we have we have Instagram and I I have my own uh, Instagram page and LinkedIn page. Uh, it's mostly just the community, the community you know? that comes in. Our, our 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 customers. We have you'd be surprised how many people walk in. They're like, I've been living here for ten years. Absolutely. I didn't even know you guys they were here. About, that's it. You know what? I get I that travel, all the time. I'll travel one hour just to have a taste of this. There are people that, that yeah, we have the, we have a lot of loyal customers, but uh, our driving force is the great people of this area, the Scarlet and St. Clair area. Whoa. Yeah. This is something else, guys. This is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. So delicious. Thank you, yeah. Now, we put a lot of hard work, and we put a... You know, when it comes to cooking, even pastries, like a little piece of me is in, in, you know, like my soul when I make something. I don't just, it's not just a job for me, you know. 
I've been do, I've been doing. I went to college for about a year, and then I realized mm -hmm. that, like yourself, with your passion, with mm -hmm. your, this is something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing it since I was 17, 18. You know, like a lot of English, trial and error. But, of, you know. so, of course, like English people say, the proof of the pudding is in proof the Proof is it? Yeah, yeah. So definitely, it's a proof. Mm -hmm. It's definitely No, proof. no, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. This is... Um, yeah. Uh, honestly... But we have mostly it's just word of mouth no. and our, 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 our loyal customers that are... Well, the word of mouth goes a long way, but now mm -hmm. we will definitely take it extra further. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. You know, like, this is something, you know, mm. my brother and I, my younger brother, Francesco, and I mm -hmm. were now taking over the store. Mm. Oh, yeah. We're going to dive into that as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely going to be part of our discussion. Right? Sure. Yeah, because I want to know your plans and how do you guys come up with ideas, individual ideas, and combine it and mm -hmm. make it work. You know, I mean, you both are very, you know, interesting and creative and all that. So there are times where you feel, you know, there's going to be questions. Well, the, 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 the good thing is, is like we have our, see, when my brother Joel, he was, he was alive. Mm -hmm. well, when he was alive, so that was, a, there was always like the, you got the three people butting heads, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, but we all had our own boundaries, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we all, we never clashed. Mm -hmm. In certain things we did, mm -hmm. but that's just, I think that's just being brothers. <laughs> it had nothing to do with anything else, anything else besides being brothers. But now as, uh, unfortunately, my, my older brother passed away a couple of months oh, ago, Joe. Yeah, 46. Oh, wow. So uh, right now it's just, my brother and I, we're, we're just, we're taking care of the business, but we're also, we're going through a process of losing a sibling. And as my father passed away four years ago, that my mother passed away a year later, it was different because they were older, your parents. But then when it's a sibling, it kind of puts a, a little bit of a block on, on what needs to be done for the store. But now moving forward, you know, it's been a couple, it's February. So, you know, March, it's been, you know, not even two months yet. So actually it's been over two months. Yeah, about two months. And, you know, moving forward now, like he has his ideas for his, and I support him. And whatever I do in the back, he supports me. You know, we all look after each other. And that's how it is. We have a system. That's what my father always used to tell us. As long as you have a system and you follow your system, you'll be okay. So that's the system that we have. We help each other out. Like if I need help, he'll help me. If he needs help, I help him. But at the end of the day, the decision making, I leave it up to him for the store, and he leaves the decision in the back in the making yeah, up for yeah. me. And I think that's where you have to have that balance where you uh, can't cross boundaries, mm. you know? And uh, that's what we do. Yeah. But it's been a little bit tougher now that my older brother passed away. Yeah. So now it's you and your... Just me and him. Yeah. Is that your younger or... He's a year younger than me. Yeah. yeah. We're all a year apart. Mm. Yeah. So, um... One of the, the challenges when you guys just, just you know, took over the business? The first challenge? Yeah. Well, the, the biggest challenge was when my father passed away. Mm. You're asking what was the biggest challenge yeah. after that? Was a, our, biggest, our biggest challenge was um, people using our, my father as a, as a soft spot for us. You know what I mean? Oh, but you're, okay, my father, he ran his business his way with his certain people, right? With his cus with uh, salesmen or different different vendors. So they they, I guess without them knowing, like when there's somebody new, obviously we're not going to do the same thing as my father would do, right? So the biggest challenge in the beginning was trying to have us people look at us like we're taking over, not just some owner's kids taking over that we were ready for, and we have. It's been four years and. We've kept it going and we're doing well. So the, the biggest challenge was trying to get uh, past, you know, my father's umbrella. You know what I mean? Like we had to prove that we could still do it. It's not just my father did it and being known as the boss's kids that are just working there. You know, like I had to prove myself like back there, make trial and error, working, bringing out pastries, working, putting in lots of hours. 
and of Lots of hours. And of course, it's something that runs in the town. So obviously, when to lose to, you know, to the business at a very early age. Yeah, and plus it happened during the pandemic too. So that was a tough one, wow. you know? Wow. Yeah, running the store during the pandemic just was a whole different change, you know? And uh, also dealing with my father's passing as well, right? When so that, that? in May 2020, May 10th, 2020. So that was tough, you know. That, that yeah, my, having my fa my father passing was tough. That was tough. Yeah, because he was always that's a that's him over there. Oh, that wow. that painting over there, yeah. That. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Then that's my mom. Oh, mom. That's my mother, and that's my father over there, making coffee. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And um, when did they migrate to? Uh, to In the sixties. In the, 60s. in the 60s, yeah. yeah. Came here in the 60s. What year in the 60s? Yeah. I don't know, but I know it was in the 60s. Yeah. And he lived on the Danforth. So when they came here, he was, and then my mother just lived uh, on Jane and Lawrence. That was her. But he's, he's always been, has he always been in the same business? My father, yeah, yeah, yeah. He opened up the bakery and he said he was 19, 18 or 19. It was him, his brother, and his brother-in-law. The brother and the brother-in-law. His brother, his older brother, and his older brother-in-law. Yeah, my aunt's uh, husband. What, what was it like for them? Can you remember? When well, my 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 uh, my father was partners longer with his brother because my uncle passed. Uh, my my uncle, who was my father's brother-in-law, my my aunt, my Zim Maria's, he passed away young. I was really young, so I don't really recall much of him but he was mostly from what i recall he was mainly a lot with my uh my uncle ross and my aunt she eventually she just wanted to do her own thing so she yeah that's amazing yeah and um do you um where do you see the business going in the next five years still here hopefully no. yeah no. we're still going to be here yeah they're actually going to be doing major construction on the bridge. Oh, yeah, we do catering. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call in. We have a kitchen. There's nothing we can't make. We have, we don't like have flyers or menus because we believe we got a kitchen. If there's something that you want that we can make, we'll make it happen. Mm -hmm. That's where you have a kitchen and you got uh, a phenomenal cook. Mm -hmm. So that's how it is. Yeah. Like, um, birthday cakes, wedding birthday cakes. cakes, wedding cakes. I've done, yeah, especially mm -hmm. wedding cakes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. At least a week for, advance, no, right? not for a wedding cake, but for like uh, custom cakes. Mm -hmm. The cakes that I have on display, that I can make at the drop of a dime. But if there's anything special to request that you need, mm -hmm. that I have to outsource, let's just say a couple of things, mm -hmm. that takes a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. No last minute cakes. Mm -hmm. Wedding cakes, the longer the better. I mean, if, mm -hmm. if you know your wedding date, right? Don't wait till the last week to order your wedding cake. That's so fine. That should be one of the first things you do. I know I did, even though I made my own wedding cake, but still. And I said, whoever comes from here, please, Try the you know canola. Yeah. It's um it's beyond. I mean there's no word that actually one can tell to describe how tasty it is. The cream is not like that sugary. I have to taste the sugar. Mm -hmm. but it's, there. it's yeah, there is sugar, yeah, definitely sugar in the in the ricotta, but the ricotta has that ricotta there's got a higher fat content. Mm. It's very good ricotta. It's not your chalky mm -hmm. you know type of con uh, ricotta that you know does it I don't like it. Once I tried this, mm -hmm. I I've never tried. I've never used anything else. Yeah. It's it's very creamy. Some people don't even think it's ricotta. Hmm. And tell me more about this wall because it's really good. That's the Enos, yeah. Okay. And what's the what's the secret behind the Enos? I don't know the secret behind it, but I know it's it's a Sicilian pastry. Mm -hmm. The Enos, yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, when I went to Italy with my father, we've always been making them. Mm -hmm. But when I went to Sicily with my father, I really tried a, a really good one. And mm -hmm. I tried my best to, you know, make a nice, fresh a brioche bun. Yeah. 
And the ricotta is the that's the key too. You gotta have good ingredients. Like my the brioche, all my eggs, I don't use pasteurized eggs. I crack all my eggs. They don't come in a box. You know? And uh, when what's the when is the what when do you eat this? Like is it a dessert? Is it before or after or in between? No, it's a dessert. It's a dessert, yeah. Actually, in Sicily, people just drive anywhere during the day. They'll stop inside the bakery and they'll get one and eat one. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a it's considered a dessert. Um, but like I said, it's fried, so I consider it as a dessert. Some people may not. The signature, right here. That's yeah. the that's the cannoli. But like I said, the cannoli is what people come in. But like I said, we got tarts. I got eclairs, uh, zeppoli. I know the zeppoli, we usually stop around Easter, but since Easter was short this year and it, it was in March, I, I still made it. I'm going to make it to the end of April, then I'm going to stop, which I usually do anyway, right? Yeah. The zeppoli, like we also have seasonal pastries. That's, that's, what, that's another thing, like the zeppoli, the, the Easter grain bread, the pastiera. What do I have here that represents Canada? That's a good question. Uh, tarts. I got <laughs> strawberry tarts. I got, uh, Canada is known for our butter tarts. I got butter, you know, I still got the butter tarts. I got, I don't just have Italian products here, right? I do butter tarts. I got custard. I do the Portuguese natas tarts I have. I got turnovers, croissants, you know. But if it has to be Canada, I'd have to go with the tart, no. butter tarts. I just like what, I love what I do. So that's basically, you know, like I said, it's second, second nature to me. This is my... I'm here mostly, I'm here more than I am at home, right? Yeah. So I just keep myself making what I got to make, you know? And I try putting out different things. And like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a labor of love, right? Like I said, a little piece of my soul goes into everything here, right? So yeah. you don't grow, you realize how fast you grow up. Okay, my father, I was in my, I was 41. Uh, but you, you grow up a lot faster when your parents pass away. So now all of a sudden you're out of, even though you're a man, when your father's around, he's still the man. And when he passed away, it's like, okay, now overnight, that's it, you're, you're growing up. And you gotta stay, you gotta be mentally strong and you gotta have faith and you gotta have strength, value. That's why I believe that you gotta stay strong. Absolutely, yeah. There's no time for weakness. You gotta stay, you know. And, um, it's easier to call it quits. That's another challenge that we had. A lot of people thought we were going to sell after my father passed away. It was actually encouraged by certain people. And that was a, that was a challenge. Because everyone thought, like I said, we were just the owner's kids. So we would sell it as soon as... Well, it's been four years and we're not planning on selling right now. That, or anytime. Yeah, yeah. And then any plan of expansion? We haven't thought about that right now. We just want to, we have something good here. Let's just keep it going. Because like I said, when you expand, then either me or him would have to go there and that will take away what's going on over here. We work better together here than if we were separated. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense because, I mean, you know, United, you stand, divided, you fall. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I, listen, when, like I said, when prices went up, I, that, I didn't even occur to me to go cheap. I kept, we keep the quality. We're known for our quality. Like my cakes, they're, I, they're nicely decorated. They're not spectacular, but you eat a cake and you know that it's real. It's homemade. This is, this is homemade. You this know is that like, yeah. the cake, that custard, mm -hmm. it's not jello. Yeah. It's not, like I said, I don't use one step mixes, pre-mixed stuff, nothing. Not even my brioche. I, it's eggs and flour and sugar. I mean, and everything, butter. I, everything I taste, yeah. Lots of butter. Like my, my eclairs, I use butter. I don't use shortening or lard. I use butter. Even though butter is expensive, I still use butter. And when you eat it, you taste the butter. Absolutely. I, I have, to, have to watch my weight. I used to be a big yeah. guy. Well, you know what? I, so you're, you're going to eat that. <laughs> you, done your, you got your coffee? No, I'm not. All right. Yeah. No problem. This is... Well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, you may stay up with the sugar. I don't know about the caffeine. <laughs> no, I love this area. I love, I've been, we've been here since 86 or 88, something like that. 
And like, I've had the pleasure of watching all the neighborhoods, neighborhood kids grow up. Mm. You know, oh, yeah. there's a couple in particular that when they moved, I, mm. I was in tears. I cried. Oh, wow. You know, I missed them so much because you wa you have the you have the pleasure of seeing a, a, a child come in with their mother and their father, and the child is three months old, and now he's six, mm. and then he becomes ten, and then you know they have the family moves on, and it's like they're not here anymore. You're used to seeing them every day. So to me, they're, our clients are not just customers; they're friends, family, even. You know, from the palate. Oh, inherited well, business. Know, yeah, inherited. What are the challenges? that comes along and how... Well, the first you thing you go... Well, yeah. it, you got to look at it like this. Like, mm. not all family... Like, my father wanted us to go to school. Yeah. This was a backup. But it was a backup that we always wanted to fall into. Yeah. It, like I said, for every situation is different. Like, we purchased this from a family mm. where the father's daughters didn't want it. Mm. So... That's why he had to sell it. Like I said, every situation is different, but if you want to fall, I know there's two other bakeries that have been inherited too, and they're keeping it going. So what I tell anybody, if there's something you want to do and you were grown up into it and worked into it, keep it going. But if you weren't in it and you were like a family where you fought, went and did something else and you had to inherit it, don't just dump it off to someone that doesn't know what they're doing. Absolutely. Keep it going. Even if it's in another person, another person who like we did, like we kept it going from Santino mm -hmm. and we'll keep it going as long as we possibly can. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and yeah. if my children one day want to keep it going, they can keep it going. But if they don't want to keep it going, let them do the right thing and give it to someone that can keep it going Absolutely. or sell it to someone that can keep it going. And it's a lot of hard work. Like, I, we're putting more work now than I believe my father did, you know, because times well, changed. Right? Yeah. Times changed. Wow. Don't dump it. Keep it. If you want to keep it, if you can keep it, and you, want, and you have the knowledge, you know, like, like I said, my dad was my hero. I learned a lot from my father, not just baking, just to see how he, not just how he did business, but how he treated people and how, you know, it was a huge loss to the community when, when he passed away. And it's sad that I couldn't do more for him because of, it was like in the heart of heat of COVID in, you know, in May, where we couldn't even have a proper funeral for him. It was just five of us because we couldn't have more than 10 people because it was five of us. But you got to include the people that work at the funeral home, too. So they count as as bodies. So, you know, that but I know he's proud of us, you know, and that we're keeping it going. And that's the best thing I could do for my, for my father and my and my my late brother and my mother. So all this happened during COVID. My father, yeah, and my mother a year later, 2021. So that was still that's yeah, still COVID. Yeah. He didn't die from COVID. He was he was ill. You know, they, there was no COVID. It wasn't a COVID related death. He was just ill. And you know, the hospitals weren't really looking at anybody at the time. He had to see a doctor through a computer screen. So that's, that's, it is what it is, you know. I mean, he wasn't the only one, so that's why I'm not too upset. A lot of people are in the same situation, so. No, I, it's not the hospital's fault. He was ill, it's just, you know, I'm sure he could have got a better diagnosis quicker when you visually see somebody, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But, he wasn't the only one, so I'm not upset about it, right? And of course, also, um, taking over the business, it's not even just the creative part. You also need to be you know, really good in, you know, in, um, you know, in terms of uh, finance, you know, numbers, mm -hmm. and all that, you know, ordering, and, you know, like... Well, I, I, sure as, as, I, as I said, like, you know, because of inflation, prices have gone really really high and uh, as i said i'm not going to substitute quality for a dollar so i still keep the same quality you know the prices have changed but like i said you eat it you know that you're eat what you're eating and everything is made here and there's you can't compare you know a ten dollar a ten dollar pastry well they're not ten dollars but it's okay like a five dollar pastry can't compare it to a two-dollar pastry. 
you're looking at, okay, well, it's $2, but sugar's cheap. <laughs> sugar's cheap. And when you bite into something, it's just sweet. But when you bite into a, a pastry that has quality ingredients, milk, eggs, okay, flour, sugar, butter, you could taste it. And that's, that's the difference. And, you know, and like I said, I'm not going to substitute uh, quality for, for price. So the price does change. You know, we try, we absorbed as much as we could. But at the same time, it comes to a point where now things go up so fast, so quick, you have no choice but to put it up. Because like I said, there's tax, there's gas, they got the carbon tax, it just went up again. If I tell you how much our gas bill is, it's, it's, that's all included in the prices of what you're paying, you know, and it's, it's unfortunate the way it is right now. It wasn't like this four years ago, that's for sure. Price, the price of eggs and flour tripled. Literally tripled. Yeah. Literally tripled. And they don't warn you, eh? You get, you order your, your order, it comes in and there it is, boom. Holy, from $21 to $28 overnight. Yeah, uh, and they don't give you a warning so you could say, okay, let me buy an extra 100 bags. They don't tell you. But that's the trick. Yeah. 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 And it's the same it's lot the number as it was last week. It's not a new lot. Yeah. It's not a new batch. It's yeah. the same batch Absolutely. that they, you know. That's right. It's all about, you know, it's all about making money. Yeah. Making money all this money. Yeah. So money. Yeah. And when do you, when do you, you know, when do you break into your own, um, your own psyche by indulging in? When do you, you know, I mean, you know, I know, I know how hard it is, you know, to maintain that discipline that, you know, uh, my weight has gone up and down at least three, four times. I said, you know what? I'm tired of buying new clothes, <laughs> changing, si yeah. not bu bu buying new clothes, but changing different sizes of clothes. Mm -hmm. So I, I was pretty heavy at one time and I was like, you know, this is not healthy. So, you know, I try, I discipline myself. I, if I got a taste, I taste, I don't eat. Wow. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, I, I don't know how to do that. Well, I got to make sure everything tastes the same or like I said, I have no problem giving a customer a pastry, try it. That's one thing my dad, he was always like that. He wasn't cheap, you know what I mean? Like, it's a pastry. There's guy, customers, like I said, they come in every day. It's like any other bakery. I'm, what's, the, what's the harm in giving them a couple of pastries yeah. to eat? And then they, they tell me, I ask them, how does it taste? Or is it the same? Is it the same? Consistency is key. It is key, yeah. If you're gonna be good, be good all the time. If you're gonna be bad, at least be bad all the time. Don't go from bad to good, get, and then go back to bad. That's, that's inconsistent. You have, yeah, that's you the thing. Consistency is key. You got to be the same. And that's what I can honestly say. I am consistent. I try to be 100% consistent. Not perfect, but consistent. Guys, you heard from the horse's mouth. Always you know, a pleasure. It's absolutely amazing meeting you. I'm so Likewise, glad I'm, I, you came in here asking for a pastry. He was asking which no. one has the less sugar. I said none of them. That's You're in trouble. I was in trouble. <laughs> but guess what? A good, a good trouble. Yeah. All right. So guys, you know where it is. Again, can we mention? 17 Scarlet Road, Toronto, Ontario. One Canada. Ontario, in Canada. Please do come whenever you in town. Come around and taste the wonders of this, you know, uh, you know, pastry. But um, my favorite ones are the, you know, I keep, um, you know the like, Enos, the cannolis. The, the cannolis and um, you name it. I always got broken cannolis for people to try. Don't There's worry so about many. it. And if you have a hungry time, you want to also, you know, go straight into uh, uh, the hot table. Uh, yeah. yeah, the hot table is there. Is there. Amazing salad. You know, the chicken, oh gosh, that's like so delicious. Everything that I tested here, you've seen it. Right? It's absolutely delicious. I cannot actually even, you know, say enough, you know, how it is, you know, how tasty it is. I'm so glad that I found this place. And uh, I don't always do this to all the, you know, the places that I've been. I mean, you know, I've been to many places. So me spending that much time and doing this, then it's definitely, you know, it's definitely worth it. And I want to send out the best, you know, out there. That's what I share it. For me, that's what it's all about. Sending the best of the best out there. So I select who I send out there, who I introduce. So this is it, guys. Come it was a pleasure. And support and enjoy it. And you guys will thank me later. Hope to see you Come soon. Here and you will thank me later. That I can guarantee you. Bye. Thank you.
Well, thank you. And uh, please do subscribe and hit the bell button. And the notification button. And Don't the forget the notification button. That's right. Sounds good. See you one more time. 17 Scarlet Road, Messina Bakery, Scar 17 Scarlet Road, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Postal code M6L1V6 if you want to write or anything like that. We're on Instagram as well, Messina Bakery. Check our uh, website, messinabakery.com. Our telephone number is 416 762 2496. So I